All right, good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. Uh, today, I just want to do, I just want to make another discussion video. And what I want to talk about today is, is to answer the question, do I need a, 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 uh, a smart home hub? Uh, do I need one? And the answer to that is it just depends on what you're... Oh, sorry, I thought I lost recording there, guys. Running out of space here. Um, what I mean by that is it just depends on what you're going to be doing with the hub. Um, for instance, I have the Samsung SmartThings hub. And I bought that because I needed something to communicate with a Z-Wave switch. And so Z-Wave switches is what I have mounted on the wall behind here. It's basically a switch that works off a mesh network. So the more you have, the stronger your signal strength is. Now, I only have one. And basically all it does is it makes your a standard switch a smart switch. And so naturally, I put that on areas where I have, uh, and I want to get one for the kitchen, but I put it on this track lighting here because I want the ability to still be able to voice control that, still be able to have that a Wi-Fi smart item, but using a standard track lighting, okay? So that's kind of a nice thing about having the Z-Wave or the Zigbee protocol in a switch, okay? But in order for that to work, you have to have the hub. It does not work without the hub. So I ended up getting the Smart Things Hub, and unfortunately, I only have one switch right now because they're kind of expensive. They're like forty bucks, and if you're going to go with that protocol, they're going to average about thirty-five to forty dollars, no matter who you go with. Whatever what company you go with, it's going to cost about the same. Uh, now there are other there are other options by Sony Office stuff like that, but I haven't really messed around with those yet. So maybe at a later date, I'll opt to maybe test some of those out. I'm just not sure. But right now, uh, again, that's what they cost. So in order for the Z-Wave switch to work with um, you know, uh, voice control or again, uh, remote, remotely or through Wi-Fi, you have to have the hub. So what do I use my hub for other than that is just that because since getting the Google Home and the Amazon version, the Alexa, right? Alexa, never mind. <laughs> she always comes on and doesn't come on. Um, it's really in theory, or not in theory, but it basically... Those devices, the whether you go with the Amazon one or the Google one, they've become so. I guess. Uh, I guess uh, they, they, those devices have now interacting with pretty much everything out there, and so the idea in that is, you know, it's nice to be able to have the hub. I guess if you want to control the Z-Wave stuff, but if you're not getting Z-Wave or Zigbee or, or wanting to do it, what I've done with like having those switches on certain devices, there's really no point in getting the hub. Now, what I like about um, now. The Samsung SmartThings Hub does communicate with LifeX products and Philips Hue, but the thing is, what I found is when I add those devices directly, uh, the LifeX app directly to whether it be Alexa or or um, Google, basically Google thinks when I have them added to SmartThings and to uh, uh, Google, it thinks like for instance, I have three lights on this room, three lights in the living room. It thinks I have six. So in order to avoid confusion with the commands or the voice commands. I deleted the LifeX bulbs or everything actually from uh, the Samsung SmartThings Hub, and I specifically use that for any Z-Wave device that I'll get um, in the in, in the future. So that's my two cents on that. I have to say that the Google and the Alexa play really well with others, okay, or the the Amazon girl, we'll call her that. Pretty much everything you can think of that's a smart home item, for the most part, within reason, is available to be communicated with your voice. And so, for instance, what I mean by that is the Google Home becomes your hub, or if you want to use her, okay? What I like about it is that, you know, the whole thing about having smart home stuff is it's great to be able to voice command things. It's great to be able to have this remote connection to your home. But I like the ability to basically, you know, we've been turning on lights the same way for a long time. And that's the only thing with, like, a lot of the smart home stuff is in some cases, like the LifeX bulbs, you lose the ability to use the switch. And now you have to use the app. And to me, that's inconvenient to every time I want to turn on lights, to have to pull out my phone and find the app and open the app. You know, it's just, it's inconvenient. So that's what I love about these two voice devices is that they basically replace the switch. And now it becomes convenient to not only turn your lights on remotely, but it becomes convenient to use your voice now as a switch. And it works well because if you have them throughout your house, no matter where you're at, you're, it's like standing next to the switch. So in my opinion, you really don't need a hub unless you're going to want to communicate with Z-Wave devices. And like I said, I was hoping that, oh, well, I got a couple of these Sonoff switches and the uh, uh, Smart Life uh, plug-in modules off eBay because they were affordable. You know, they're $5 each or, you know, about $11 each as opposed to going to, like, one of the, you know, big box stores here and buying ones that cost you $40. The only thing is that 
Samsung smart things, and the Wink is kind of the same thing too. It's very, very uh, picky about what it what it plays well with. And so like those cheaper devices, Samsung's not gonna do that. They want you to buy the higher end ones, ones that they have a deal with or are contracted with. So one thing about the, again, again about the Google, is that it's compatible with a lot more different devices. And so really, when you think about if you're gonna be getting, and I urge you, if you're gonna be getting involved in any kind of smart home stuff, I wouldn't necessarily go out right off the bat and go buying a hub unless you're gonna be using it for Z-Wave or Zigbee. I would go ahead and go go buy your you know your Echo or go buy your uh, Google Home, and you know it's uh it's it just like I said no matter what for the most part a lot of the things that you're gonna get to add to your home that's cost effective it's gonna be able to work well with that and it it just they play well with others so that's my two cents on the smart home hubs I think it's just something that came out before uh, you know it was kind of the, the first thing that came out before uh, the Amazon product or the Google product, no matter which, whichever one you go with, um, it was something that came out before that, and that's what kind of got me to buy one, uh, with the exception of the Z-Wave. But I, I wanted the hub to be able to control, you know, whatever I added. I didn't realize it though. It's not really much that that thing will actually, unless you go with their specific brands, uh, that it'll actually communicate with. So that's kind of unfortunate about that. Uh, but uh, like security cameras, you're limited to like I believe Arlo and maybe one other company. So I want to use the motto, but. Um, you know, but however, the the Echo, you know, you can voice command that if you don't want to get alerts, which I don't care about getting alerts. Uh, anytime motion detected, it my phone's always going off, so it's picking up the street. And you can set that for different uh, zones. Um, I have it set to pick up anything that's going to be around my house. So um, sometimes people might get a little annoyed by that. If you know, let's say I was at home and I'm like, oh, I don't need the notifications. You can actually voice command that with the Echo to say set home mode, set away mode. So that's kind of a nice feature as well. So like I said, it just, they play with a, uh, they play well with pretty much everything out there. And I think that if you're gonna get involved in smart home stuff, um, for 30 bucks, now is a great time to buy those devices. That's gonna be your smart home hub and you're gonna be very happy with it. The only other thing I wanna say about that is with the Google, you can't, to my knowledge, actually use the Google as a switch. So like with SmartThings Hub, basically you can go into the app, like let's say I have my lights, Whatever Samsung is compatible with, you can access it through their app and say open. You can open Smart Things, turn on whatever lights you have added to it. Okay, but it has to be that with specific products. Well, with the Amazon, that one there actually allows you to open the app and still have control for on and off for all the devices that it's compatible with. Whereas the Google Home, you can't do that through the app, but it'll do it with your voice. So I just want to just kind of touch base on that as well. So um, that's my two cents on the Smart Home Hub. I don't think you need one, again, unless you're going to use the Z-Wave or Zigbee uh, protocol for some of your in-wall switches. Um, if you get one for the right deal, it doesn't hurt to have it. You know, it's nice that I have it at least. I got it for, they had it for half off. It was 50 bucks. And at least I have it now or if I want to add the switches, which I do. I want to add two more switches. I have the ability to control those. So for me, it worked. But for you, it might not. If you're going to be going with only Wi-Fi products, then get yourself the Google Home or the Alexa. All right, guys, well, that's my two cents on the Smart Home Hub. Thank you very much for watching. Um, remember to subscribe to the channel. More videos coming. And as always, have a wonderful day, folks. Take care.